In my work as a zoologist, I've seen lots of instances across the globe where helping out one charismatic species helps improve the situation for all of the species in the same area. This could certainly be the case for gardens in the UK, where helping out the charismatic hedgehog can not only help out that species, but also a range of our other native wildlife. By following any of the eight methods that I'm going to discuss in this video, you're not only going to help out hedgehogs, but also a range of wildlife surrounding the hedgehogs, making your gardens much more interesting places to be in. We're going to walk through a garden alongside this hedgehog and see how different methods can make sure it's happy to stay there. But why do hedgehogs even need our help? Well, hedgehog numbers have fallen dramatically in the last few decades. In fact, there are half as many hedgehogs in the UK today as there were the day that I was born. This is due to a number of reasons, but by following the eight methods in this video, you can help mitigate some of those reasons. Breaking up habitats, otherwise known as habitat fragmentation, is one cause of their decline. This is thanks to intensified agriculture in rural areas and increased road and wall building in urban areas. A loss of food is also causing their decline, with a range of pesticides, fungicides and herbicides reducing natural food sources. Lost places to nest and hibernate aren't helping, with the trend for neater, tidier gardens leaving hedgehogs with nowhere to rest. And finally, another big threat to hedgehogs is climate change, which is causing them to wake up too early from hibernation before there's enough food to sustain them. Before I go into the ways that you can help mitigate these threats and boost the population of hedgehogs in your garden, I just, just want to say a really big thank you to two of my younger viewers. I'm not going to say their names because I don't want to risk any privacy of children choosing to watch my videos, but they sent me an email with a video in it a few weeks ago and it really did make my day. They were telling me how much they enjoyed my videos and also requested that I make some videos on hedgehogs and newts, which is what inspired this one. I'd already filmed a video on newts, which I've since released and you can go and watch on my channel. So I wanted to take the opportunity while filming this video to just say a really big thank you to them. And if there's any other viewers out there who are really interested in a video topic that I haven't covered yet, please let me know in the comments and I can add it to my list. Now let's get into the eight methods that you can help hedgehogs. The first thing you can do is to plant native plants. In particular, a native hedge is a great addition to a garden. Plants like hawthorn, blackthorn, honeysuckle and dog rose all act as food plants for a range of moth and butterfly caterpillars. This provides hedgehogs with a natural source of invertebrate food. Additionally, hedges act as a natural corridor for hedgehogs to move along, safely getting between different gardens as they search for more food and nesting sites. Speaking of nesting sites, the buildup of leaves and other vegetation at the base of a hedge provides a safe spot that won't be disturbed when hedgehogs go into their winter hibernation. But hedgerows aren't the only native plants to be thinking about. Typical weed species like stinging nettles are really important for various butterfly species which specialise on certain food plants. They provide even more caterpillars for hedgehogs to be able to eat as well. You've also got to take into account all of our native grasses, and by keeping grasses at different heights in different parts of your garden, you can provide hedgehogs with a safe space to walk through, or if the vegetation is dense enough, even a space to take shelter in. You have to be careful if you're ever planning or maintaining these spaces though, because if you accidentally cut it, you could injure any animals, hedgehogs included, that are trying to take shelter within the deep grass. A way to avoid this and to best mitigate the threat of the cutting is to basically walk through the grass first so that any animals in the area know that you're coming and there's a disturbance and have the chance to get away. Then you can cut it to about half the height that you're planning to cut and then walk through it again to see if you can spot any animals or any young nests that might not be able to run away. And once you're happy that the area is safe enough for the animals that have been in there, you can then cut it down to the final height that you want. Wildlife friendly gardening isn't about making your garden go completely wild and losing control of it if you don't want it to be. It's mostly about making sure that you're taking into consideration how your actions in your garden could affect the species that are sharing your space with you. The second thing that you can do to help hedgehogs is to provide supplementary food and water. Although natural food is always best, by providing hedgehogs with another option you can help see them through periods of drought when invertebrates are in less supply. Make sure that you don't feed them milk or bread because they can't digest these products. Instead, set out meat-based foods like chicken or turkey-based cat and dog food. Supplementary feeding is especially good in early autumn and spring, which is either side of the hedgehog's hibernation times. Before hibernation, you're helping them fatten up so that they're able to survive the winter. And after hibernation, you're helping them quickly get those fat stores back so that they're ready to raise their offspring. The third way to help hedgehogs in your garden is to increase their habitat's connectivity. 
Hedges are a great way to do this because they mean there are no barriers between your garden and the next one, but if you do have fences or walls, you can still make a difference. Put a hole the size of a CD case into the barrier or add a burrow underneath it if you don't want to cut into your fencing and the hedgehog will be able to freely move through the space. You can go a step further by convincing your neighbours to also add a gap into their garden fences. This can create an interconnected neighbourhood wide habitat which supports much greater hedgehog numbers than just your garden alone. If you want to learn more about how to put a fence gap or a wall gap into your garden as well as all sorts of other wildlife friendly improvements you can make, then make sure to check out the wildlife gardening guides that I created. I've got one that's suited towards grassy gardens, as well as one suited towards courtyard gardens, and each one has a different set of additions that you can make to your garden to improve it for wildlife. A fourth way to help hedgehogs is to provide them with shelter. You can do this by either buying a ready-made home or taking on a fun project of building one. Make sure that there is an entrance tunnel that's at least 40 centimetres long, otherwise predators might be able to get in. These houses should be placed out of direct sunlight, have an entrance away from prevailing winds, and be under thick vegetation or structures like sheds. They work best if you place a waterproof cover over them and then camouflage that with a pile of leaves or vegetation. Even after you put down a hedgehog house, it could take a full year for the hedgehogs to discover it and to realise that it's actually safe for them to use. Make sure that you're not constantly checking on it throughout this process because you'll just end up disturbing the hedgehogs. If you do want to keep an eye and find out when they're using it, then before you put one down, make sure to install a camera which connects up to your computer so that you can keep an eye on them remotely. Or you could also set out camera traps within your garden, which are a distance away from the hedgehog house so won't disturb it, but will alert you to when there are hedgehogs in the area. Option number five is to avoid the use of chemicals in your garden. A whole range of chemicals that are often used in gardening reduce the supply of insects in the food chain and so increase the risk of hedgehog starving. Additionally, slug pellets are particularly bad because they contain metaldehyde, which is lethal to hedgehogs. The organic pellets are less toxic but still remove slugs and so still cause hedgehogs to go hungry. If you're worried about having slugs and snails in your garden, then working with hedgehogs will actually greatly benefit you. By boosting hedgehog populations, you'll have a natural pest control system and these predators will happily hoover up any invertebrates that you don't want there. A sixth way to help garden hedgehogs is to make sure you check through your garden waste before disposing of it. Piles of old wood, leaves, grass cuttings and compost often get burnt, mowed, forked through or disposed of in some other way that ends very badly for the hedgehogs residing within them. By carefully going through this waste before getting rid of it, you're making sure that you don't injure any animals within it. On top of that, sometimes it's best to just not dispose of your garden waste. A pile of logs, twigs, leaves or other garden waste can create a really nice, safe, warm, dry space for hedgehogs to rest and hibernate in. They can also attract a range of invertebrates, which the hedgehogs love to feast on. Remember that a clean and tidy, picture-perfect garden is the enemy of wildlife. If you have a pond in your garden, then the seventh method of helping hedgehogs is for you. Hedgehogs love to drink from garden ponds or any container of water that you place outside. Although they are good swimmers, if the sides of the pond are too steep, they won't be able to get out and they'll drown. To prevent this from happening, make sure that you give hedgehogs an easy exit route by adding in a man-made ramp, a slope of rocks or pebbles, a collection of logs, or even a thick rope net draped over part of the pond's side. It won't only be hedgehogs thanking you for this slope. A whole host of smaller creatures, like mice, shrews, garden birds and reptiles, will all stop by your garden pond to have a drink and could accidentally fall in. By providing them with this quick escape route, you're really helping your garden wildlife out. The final way that you can help hedgehogs in your garden is to be careful with your pets. The bite of a loose dog or swipe of claws from a curious cat can leave a nasty cut that quickly turns into an infection. I've seen with my own dog how quickly they can pick up on a hedgehog's presence and go for them. Luckily, the hedgehog in this situation wasn't actually harmed, but my dog did get some really nasty cuts on his muzzle. By watching out for your dog in the garden at night and keeping your cat away from wildlife, you're helping hedgehogs out and keeping them wanting to come back. Are you already doing any of these eight methods in your own garden? I'd love to hear in a comment below to see if you've got any resident hedgehogs as a result of it. And keep an eye out for my video coming out next week where I'm going to be discussing hedgehogs as well as some of our other insect eating mammals in a little bit more detail. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature.